from Houston Texans Training Camp. It's Coors Light Houston Texans Training Camp. Powered by Geico on Pat Booker Road. By Ansira. Find out more at Ansira.com. And by Muscle Milk. 1250 ESPN San Antonio. Your home for the Houston Texans. The ESPN San Antonio at Houston Texans training camp at the Methodist Training Center with Earl Mitchell starting nose tackle of the Houston Texans joining us now. Earl had a modest game against Minnesota in the preseason opener. Ten place total, Earl? Yep. Ten place total? Three tackles for loss and and a sack. So that's four negative plays and ten plays total. What was going on against Minnesota? Um, They didn't block you? (laughs) Not very well. They was definitely having a difficult time, you know. So, uh, you know, I was trying to take advantage of the opportunities that they were giving me. Their offense alone was, uh, you know, they really weren't, uh, you know, they really uh, weren't quite working together at some point. At some point, so they were just giving me opportunities to make plays, and I was just taking advantage of it. As a three-four nose tackle, describe to people what that's like. What what's it like to be a three-four nose tackle? It's, in the NFL? it's a grind. Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty much the position, and you know, there's not much glamour to the position, you know. And uh, you know, to have the game that I played is, you know, it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's a little bit crazy to, you know, to kind of sit here and talk about it, you know, because it's uh, not really typical. But uh, what know, is typical? Typical is just tackle. typical is you know just really just grinding you know for those uh, inside linebackers having them all make the plays and uh, you know you just uh, pretty much taking double teams and you know need, uh, to free up other guys so you know I was I was just uh, pretty much just uh, taking advantage of the uh, of the mishaps that they were giving me. Earl Mitchell joining the hard line right here on San Antonio Sports Center, 1250 ESPN San Antonio. Earl, a couple of years ago, uh, the Texas defense is towards the bottom of the league. Then a couple, two years ago, second in the league. Last year, it was, there were times when the defense was back to being dominant, and then there were times when it was. What was the difference between you know Wade Phillips' first season and last season? Um <clears throat> You know, uh, you know, we kind of came in like with a, you know, a chip on the shoulder. You know, his first year coming in, and uh, you know, his his first year, you know, there was really nowhere to go but up. You know, so we were definitely excited about being better, and uh, and we knew what we were, you know, the guys that we had, and we knew what we were capable of, capable of doing. So, you know, we were just definitely excited about, you know, just being a good defense because we had good guys that worked, and we knew that, uh, you know, if we were just willing to learn and just willing to just, uh, you know, take uh, advice from a guy who's been been in the league longer than you know a lot of us have been in the game or been born rather but uh it, we just uh you know we just wanted to just make plays and that was just uh, something that we just uh, t- took pride in having 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 him and just knowing that he was going to be there to help us what about the what about last season there were times again that it looked like you know this defense was as dominant as it can be or was the year before but then there were other times when when the you know like the playoff uh, the game against the patriots you know uh, you know we just uh, you know it's easy to say like we you know, a lot of people can look at it and say like we ran out of gas, but you know, they were definitely. It was just we were just put in a position where you know we, you know, once again we haven't really been, you know, and and I think it was really a uh, good for us. It was definitely a humbling experience for us, and uh, you know, we realized what it has, what, what it takes to beat teams like that, and you know, just being a part of the, that type of stage. And it was a, uh, you know, we were you know still fairly a young team and kind of new to the experience, and you know, and uh, but at the same time we definitely got gathered a bunch of experience from that situation and uh, just playing, you know. Got like Tom Brady and but uh you know it just I think it's just a uh, you know just comes with experience and I think uh you know we we're definitely uh you know better 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 for it. Texans nose tackle Earl Mitchell with us here on the hard line you played behind Sean Cody for a couple of years then uh, now now you are definitely the guy the starter what uh, is there a different mindset you have now that you're the starter you know um um, you know, I like I like to think so, but you know, I'm just out here. I'm just you know, I'm a, I'm a nose tackle. I'm trying to grind and I'm trying to just uh, make plays in between uh, you know two great defensive ends. You know, so you know, I just want to just uh, be a part of it, and uh, you know, I just want to just be a key contributor while we get to the Super Bowl. So that's uh, that's pretty much how I take it, and that's really what I want to do. And I just really want to just uh, make sure that I'm just uh, making plays in between those guys. One of those guys, JJ Watt, beside you. What's it like playing beside JJ Watt? You know, he's he's a dynamic player. He, uh, He's definitely, uh, you know, he's a hard worker, and uh, you know, he's wise beyond his years, and he's definitely, uh, you know, a man, some, a man amongst boys, uh, you know, sometimes, you know. So he's definitely just, uh, you know, he makes a lot of plays, and you know, and and, and uh, you know, I want to make sure that I'm kind of, you know, you know, I'm definitely trying to get as much double teams so he can get one on ones, and because a lot of teams are going to be focusing on him this year, and I just uh, want to make sure that, you know, that uh, you know, they don't want to have to 
and just single him out and just have a look around and uh, make sure they have to block other guys as well. Texans nose tackle Earl Mitchell with us right here on the hard line. Earl, Sean Cody uh, was more of an outspoken, goofy, jokester kind of guy. You seem more soft-spoken, not as you know outwardly outgoing as Sean Cody. Is, 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 is that just kind of how you've always been? or? Yeah, just uh, pretty much. I've, I've never really, I've never really uh, just been like uh, super. Never been a humorous type, but Sean uh, Cody ish. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know. And I guess there was a lot of pressure on me uh, to to kind of like just uh, fill that void, but <laughs> but that's 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 not me. And I just had to realize that, you know, I just I just I just play football. That's why I'm here. And uh, you know, Sean's a great guy. He uh, he taught me a lot as well. And uh, you know, but. Uh, uh, there, there will be no on the nose from Earl Mitchell. <laughs> who's who's the jokester in the locker room now? Jokester on the um, you got a lot of guys. To be honest, you know you got you got Daryl Sharpton, you got Antonio Brian Cushion. He's definitely uh, you know he's <laughs> he's funnier than a lot of people think, you know. But uh, we uh, definitely have a you know great group of guys and and uh, you know and they're all pretty a lot a lot of funny guys as well. Any of the the Pac-12 or at the time Pac-10 rivalry between you and some of those SC guys or um. You know, I remember, I can recall like a lot of it when uh, you know Sean and Br- Sean Cody and Brian Cushman when they were here together, they would kind of crack on me and Brooks, and, and you know just uh, whenever we would play each other, or you know there would definitely be some, you know just some you know some Pac-10 chatter you know going on in the locker room, and but uh, you know. That's, that's just that's just part of the game. Earl Mitchell with us here on the hard line, the Texans starting nose tackle. When you play a game, you mentioned the nose tackle's job is basically to lean on the offensive lineman all day. You're fighting centers and guards. How sore are you on a Monday? <laughs> What's a Monday morning like in the season? Yeah, I mean, at times it could be hard to get out of bed, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a part of it, you know, and that's just something that that a lot of people kind of take for granted. A lot of people don't watch that position at all, but, uh, you know, it's definitely something that... Uh, is it a struggle to walk? I mean, are you struggling to... Are you that, are you that sore that it's hard to walk? I'm, I'm, I'm fine, you know, but, uh, you know, they, you know, you kind of get late in the season and, you know, you're trying to... You're waking up and, you know, it's kind of tough to get up out of bed, but, you know, it's just something that, uh, you know, you you know, you want to grind for now and, you know, and that's just something that a lot of people, you know, take for granted because you have to be really durable to play this position as well. You know, you got to... That you got to fight through some, you know, adversity, and throughout the season, you're gonna you're gonna have some aches and pains, and that just that just comes with the position.